some stuff I need to get off my chest. They asked me how it was in the war. What up, soldiers? Texas Grown 409, aka the Iraq Veteran Gamer, bringing you another installment of War Stories. I'm outside enjoying the new sauna we got installed in Texas because it's fucking hotter than shit, and oh my god, I just got shot at. I'm okay though, I didn't get hit. Fuck, I just had the coolest intro to War Stories. What a way to open up War Stories than getting shot at. Nah, I really wasn't getting shot at. The neighbors across the street were actually just getting home and I guess something popped by their house or something, I don't know. It's not like their truck backfired, but they got like a brand new truck, so I don't see why it would backfire. But anyways, I'm walking down the road now because my stepmom does not want me recording at the house because she says she doesn't want people to see the house or see their things. She doesn't make no fucking sense to me because you can get on Google Maps and take a virtual tour, like walk down my road virtually and see my house, so I don't fucking understand that. And it's not the only family member that doesn't want me to record at the house. I have another one who doesn't want me to record because they said my video was disrespectful since I said some things they think were inappropriate at their house, so uh, it's fucking whatever. Uh, Kamisha's mom doesn't want me to record videos about her daughter because she says her daughter is very secretive and that kind of pisses me off too because it's like nobody's supportive of what I do even though it's something that makes me fucking happy. But anyways, enough about that fucking bullshit. Today I'm going to talk about some defense things we used while we were in Iraq. Most of these are things we used on our Humvees. The first thing is called a Warlock system. In a Warlock system, it blocks radio frequencies from blowing up IEDs or EFPs. And it's like a little antenna that goes on the back of the Humvee. And in the trunk, it's a thing that's about the size of a suitcase and it's called the Duke. And what it does, it shoots off so much radio frequencies and it sets like a bubble around your Humvee. It's like 30 meters, I think it is. And it sets up that bubble around your Humvee so people can't set off IEDs with their cell phones. So when we drive by a lot of Iraqis on the cell phone, there's, they would lose signal. And they'd get all pit. You know, every time we pass somebody on the cell phone, they'd be like, I don't need can't hear you, I can't hear you. And they get all pissed off. And I think it's funny that it's called the Duke because I think that shit has to be setting off some kind of radiation and giving us tumors in the brain. So I call it the Nuke, not the Duke. Another system we had was a Blue Force Tracker. And this is kind of like for offense, not so much defense. Blue Force Tracker is pretty much the most high-tech navigation you've ever seen in your life. We had um, a thing on the front of our Humvee, which is called the Rhino. And sorry if you can't really hear me, it's kind of windy right now. But it goes on the front of the Humvee and we have to let it down. And what it is, it's pretty much like an ammo box. It's like an ammo can. And it has two spark plugs in it and they heat up and get really 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 hot so when you drive over an IED because some IEDs have like little sensors on them and that heat causes the ID to blow up in front of your vehicle rather than underneath your vehicle another system we had or we didn't have we actually had this on our Humvee, but it didn't work, so I don't even know what the point of having it on the Humvee was. But it's kind of like a, think of a stick that goes in the ground, right? And you have all these little microphones on it at the top. So that goes in the back of our Humvee. And what this system does, since it has all these microphones, let's say, it's kind of like a balloon that has microphones. Just, I guess, the best way to describe it. But what it does is, if we take contact 
small arms fire say from 300 meters from the three o'clock which would be that way that's my three o'clock 12 o'clock that way so three o'clock 300 meters out this system would hear the bullet fire and it would tell us where the fire is coming from and how far so you can identify the target faster that's a pretty cool little setup on our fob we had a system called the C-Round actually um, we had the beginning parts of the system the full out system of the C-Ram is it's to shoot down mortars and rockets when we get attacked in the C-Round pretty much when the mortar is launched it detects it in the air and it sends off this eh, 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 incoming 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 and when you hear that it's loud it scares the shit out of you and you run for cover and after that siren goes off it shoots 3,000 rounds into the sky and it tries to shoot the mortar out of the sky before it lands on our base since we only had the beginning phases of the sea round we only had the siren we didn't have the Gatling gun that actually shoots down the mortars but that was a lot better than not knowing at all honestly the sea ram was actually kind of scarier than just out of nowhere here in a mortar land because that fucking sea ram was so loud I shit myself a couple times <laughs> Here's some of the enemy's defenses that they try to use on us. Or this is what I was told by our um, security people. They, we were not allowed to have cell phones over there. Like some units were allowed to, but we weren't. And it was because they said even if we took the battery out of our cell phone, they said the Iraqis could hack into our cell phone and listen to our conversations, even with the battery out. I don't know if that's really true, but that's what we were told. So they even told us if you brought your cell phone with you to throw it away. Another defense mechanism that we had on our FOB and a couple other bases around us had is called the Aerostat. And it's like it looks exactly like a blimp and it floats up about 300 feet in the sky I think they can lift it up to like 800 feet but depending on how strong the winds blowing is depends on how high they fly it and what it is it's a blimp and it has a camera on it and this camera can see miles and miles away infrared they can spot people plant IEDs um, anything like that anything suspicious like when we're on tower guard we call in a TRP would be like TRP 120 which was say like um the shed that's out there in the field they type that into the aerostat TRP 120 and the aerostat automatically shoots over to that location and they can better find what they're looking for and a lot of times the Iraqis would try to shoot at the blimp because they see this big old white blimp in the sky and pretty sure they knew it had a camera on it so you see tracers sometimes just shooting up at the blimp actually I have footage on that hard drive of mine that doesn't work hopefully I can pull everything off of it it got the click of death like I said before and I'm trying to get everything off and I have a video from our worst attack on our base And actually that's going to be an episode of war stories right there explaining that but i have the video from the aerostat of them attacking us so hopefully i can pull that off for y'all anyways i'm getting back home now so i gotta shut this off before i cause some enemies with my family or something anyways much love from the iraq veteran gamer <laughs>